Hi, welcome back. Richie Blake here, Music College TV. If you haven't checked out our other lessons, please subscribe, check out our content. It's free. What have you got to lose? Get inspired, get practicing. Okay, this goes back to lesson one about, you know, what is the bass guitar? Why should I play a bass guitar? Well, a question cropped up. What's the bass guitar you use? So let's have a look at it. This, my friends, is made by a luthier in Sheffield in England, a guy called John Shuka. He works up in the Peak District now. He's got a workshop up there, quite a small unit. I did monitors for a gig many, many years ago, and this bass player came on the stage with an instrument and he just played it. And it was the sound that I had in my head. It was really bizarre. And you know, there's a piece of advice to take from this, this, this moment together, guys. It's like, if you hear something, try and work out what it is you like. Is it is growly? Is it is it smooth? Is it fat? Is it bassy? Has it got like a mid presence or whatever? Try and discover your sound because that's you. And journeys that you can make discovering that quicker means you get inspired and you can keep that momentum going through your progression and your own development. So I, I, I approached this bass player after the gig and I said, man, what, what, what instrument is that? It sounds incredible, you know, and he was a great player, don't get me wrong. And he said, oh, it's made by this guy in Sheffield. Um, I said, would you mind giving me his number? He didn't have a website or anything at that point. And he said, yeah, sure. He wrote it on a piece of paper, straight home, phoned him up. I was like, introduced myself, had a little bit of a chat with him. He said, come on up. And I took the journey up, you know, from where I live. Um, went up to Sheffield with a, a good friend of mine and visited his workshop and kind of took, then I had a, a older jazz bass, um, a 90s Jack reissue that I kind of sort of butchered, put different pickups in and experiment. It got it playing and feeling the way I wanted it to play, but it, it, it was only so much there to the sound that I had in my head. So I met with John and it, it's amazing. You know, we think musicians are incredible. Think of these people listening to your ideas and listening to how you speak and and almost digesting that and then putting together in their head the instrument that you want to play i mean it's a it's a rare gift and you know if you haven't seen john's work check out his website facebook post all of that because he's a he's a really skilled guy so about this guy this bass guys four string it's based on a jazz bass he calls it his um custom j j bass um it's a one piece body of swamp ash there it is Beautiful piece of swamp ash. It's a bolt on neck. So the neck has bolts, okay? The neck itself is a laminate, or it's made up of stripes. You can see them there clearly. I'm gonna take it off, just make it a bit easier. Okay, you can see them there. And this is maple, rock maple, quarter sawn for those who didn't know. Um, wenge, maple, wenge, you know, it's just sandwiched together and there it goes. The fingerboard is bird's eye maple um, with just little mother of pearl inlays. Uh, this is quite cool. He does a sort of composite nut of brass and, and corian, um, which is a synthetic bone material. Um, Goto tuners, like hardware. We get some pickies of that and pop them up. because it, it, It's a beautiful looking instrument. And I mean, you know, it's little details like a little bit of ebony veneer in between there to make a stripe. The top is actually uh, what's called rotten maple. You know, we went out in his wood store when I went to visit him and he had this bit of wood that was kind of at the bottom. It was bone dry, but it had holes in it and stuff. So he backfills it with ground ebony sawdust and then sands the top. There's a layer of ebony um, veneer in there as well. And, you know, it's just, it's, 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 it's a piece of art, it's beautiful. And I've had this, this instrument for, crikey, what day is it today, Tuesday? No, it, I've had it for like 15, 15 plus years now. And and it never ceases to amaze me. I mean, the brief to him was I wanted a jazz bass with grunt. So he kind of went on the classic um, tried and tested methodology. It's sort of a hybrid of the J bass that I had with sort of a 70s neck profile. Um, but the pickup selection was quite funny. These are actually EMG extended range pickups. You know, I've got no affiliation with EMG. I just like that hi-fi sound, you know. Um, and they're actually designed for six string basses, which is why they look so beefy. You know, there's um, a DC in the bridge and a CS in, in the neck. Um, individual ABM bridge saddles. And then the preamp, because this is an active bass, is um, one of John's own designs. Um, really silent. And it's, it's something that, that I really enjoy is when you plug an instrument in, it just sounds like it, you know. I, I do have passive instruments. I'm not saying that active or passive is better, one or the other, but you plug this thing in and, and the EQ, doesn't destroy it you know you can get stuff which is sort of 18 db bass boost i mean this goes up to 8 db in treble mid and um and bass and it's just 
you know, it's got some got some interesting tones. You know, there's the the neck pickup. It's really buttery, and I mean the bridge is kind of like, yeah, you know, it's on steroids. You know, it's got that growl. You know, it's really cool, and the EQ complements it. So that's a little bit about John's instruments, and you know, uh, lucky enough to kind of play a few more of his basses as well. I've got a a lovely five string that I use a lot live, a beautiful fetless bass, which you can check out in another video. Um, but do check him out, you know, because he's he's a, a brilliant builder, a great eye for quality, and can kind of put in an instrument a sound you describe, which I think is a rare skill. So thanks for listening, guys. Cheers.